Once upon a time there were children full of life and light and love. Once upon a time Jewish children, blessings from the Lord. We have in the studio joining us an incredible gentleman, Mm -hmm. Milton Mendel Kleinberg. Milton, I'd like to say that he came all the way from Pabianice, Poland, but he actually came via Omaha. I mean, via via Poland. He's in Omaha, has lived in Omaha for a number of years. He's here in the studio with his beautiful wife, Marsha. And Milton wrote an absolutely stunning book, Bread or Death, uh, Memories of My Childhood During and After the Holocaust. Welcome, Milton. Hi, Milton. (laughs) Nice to be here. Yes. Uh, we're so really? thrilled you're here. We're so glad you're here, definitely. We are. You know, the book is an incredible testament to what happened before the Holocaust, what happened after, during. So can you share with our listeners just what came about, how you came about the title and your experiences? We would just, you know, love to hear your story, Milton. Well, it really is an interesting story. When I was 60, uh, when I turned 65, I went to Social Security, applied for Social Security benefits, and they said, well, we need your birth certificate. So I started laughing. Birth certificate, it's all been destroyed in the war. Right. Well, wouldn't you believe it, about six weeks later comes a birth certificate written in Polish. It has my name, my mother's maiden name, uh, my father's name, and that was very important from this respect. I tried to find what's happened to my family for some time, but I didn't know how to spell my mo- my mother's maiden name. It's yeah. Hopcha. Hopcha. Can you imagine trying to spell that? No. You can't even sneeze it right. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one reason for writing the book. The other reason was for writing the book is uh, my uh, ch- daughter and hu- her husband, and she has six children, made Aliyah to Israel. Oh, okay. So when they make Aliyah and the kids are in school there, and during high school they send them to Auschwitz. As a matter of fact, my Mm. grandson just got back from Auschwitz before he came to work in our office. And uh, Wait, your grandson works in, you know, he's in Omaha now? Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, he is. Oh, wow. Mazel tov. Yeah. (laughs) All my my grandchildren have to come and work in the office. As a matter of fact, everybody in their family had to learn what the old man does for a living. When they go, go to Israel, usually... Uh, just the night before they go, uh, they would call me up and say, Grandpa, I'm going to be close to where you're born. Tell us something about yeah. their place. So <laughs> I would sit till 1 o'clock and write her, email her uh, what, a little bit about the story, and they would read it to the other children. And she said, oh, they were also very impressed. So I said, okay, uh, I have to do something about yeah. it. Yeah, they kept asking you about your past. Yeah, you didn't yeah. tell them, huh? No, until we this didn't time. tell them because they usually you didn't talk about you that. Can't talk Is that no, right? I mean, you no. just don't. It's just something my, that my you just parents don't didn't want to talk about no, it. It's and, too horrific. Uh, I tell you, uh, the reason they didn't want to talk about this, the pain, and also the situation. For instance, my sisters in Milwaukee. And my, I have two sisters and a brother in Milwaukee. They didn't know that I was there. Uh, have brother till very late in life. Mm. My mother insisted that we're not telling him at all. Yeah. But uh, when my sister Goldie was getting divorced, she felt bad, so my mother told her that she was married once before too. Yeah. Oh. So <laughs> but your mother lived to an old age, right? Yeah. That's two weeks shy of 98. Wow. So How did you escape? How did you not end up in a concentration camp? You were born in Poland, and then tell us kind of what happened in your child. You were young when all this happened. Yes, I was uh, three years old, okay. you know, a little bit over three years old. Uh, when the Ger- Germans came in, you know, a lot of people don't realize that at the beginning of the war, ni- the war started September 1, 1939. The uh, Germans came in from the west. Seventeen days later, the Russians came in from the east. And they were allies yeah, at the I beginning know it. at the war. Can you believe that at the beginning? Yes. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, eight days later, uh, the Germans were knocking at our door, and right away they started anti-Jewish activity, right. rounding people up, killing, and then they said uh, to some of us, uh, "You either stay 
or you go. And the Jewish community was going to get us 50 zlotas if we agreed to go. So about a, few, a couple months later, they knocked at the door and told us, our house, out. And they packed us all together and uh, marched us down to the train station four in a row. Mm -hmm. And uh, it w the cattle... The cattle j must have just left the train when they started putting us into the cattle cars. The smell was uh, horrific. Mm -hmm. uh, we were packed like sardines in there, and for 36 hours we traveled uh, without food, water, or anything. And this is you and your mother, and you had siblings. Yeah. At that time, it was me, my, wa and my mother, my father, and I had one brother. Okay. And my mother was pregnant. Okay. So they kicked us out the train in the middle of a field. And I tell you, it was cool, but that fresh air that hit our faces, I can still remember today. It felt like I was alive yeah. you know, at that mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. After 36 hours. Oh, yes. sure. And then we, uh, they marched us down to the uh, station. Uh, they marched us down to a burned out synagogue. And they shoved us in. We didn't want to go in there because we were afraid they're going to burn the synagogue with us again. But they said there's some water and food in there, so uh, we went in there. We spent a few days in that synagogue, and then we were trying to figure out a way how to get, how to get out of there. And what we did is uh, my dad uh, bribed a Polish guard, uh, crossing guard, the the. Uh, the division of Poland was at uh, the River Bug. On one side was occupied Polish by Germany, the other one by the Soviet Union. And uh, we rented a dilapidated boat, with mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and we ba barely made it across the River Bug, and we escaped to the other side. When we escaped to the other side, the NKVD, which is turned out later on became the KGB, arrested us. And they gave us two choices, become Russian citizens or you go to Siberia. So uh, we didn't, well, uh, my mother didn't want to become a Russian citizen because she knew she would never be able to get back to Poland. At that time, she still had hopes that this is just going to blow over. Mm. Well, when they arrested us, then we took a trip to our Hungaz, which was the eastern most part of Russia, as a matter of fact, is right next to Finland. Mm. We spent a year there. My brother Velvo was born in that little place. And we were just about getting used to it, so they decided to ship us north. Uh, the reason they did that is they moved all the factories deeper into Russia or to uh, the Far East, and they needed the people to work those factories. So they put us on trains uh, and we were going to Samarkand, Uzbekistan. We didn't know that at that time, but that, that's where we ended up. The trip should have lasted about two weeks maximum, or uh, three weeks. It lasted three months. Uh. And that was because it was in June of 1941 when the uh, Germans attacked Russia and all of a sudden we were in a war again. And during that trip, trying to get to Samarkand, the bombings and the mm -hmm. everything else that was going on, it was a horrific trip. And this is where I come in. Uh, about halfway down the trip, uh, m uh, my father went out to, to barter for some food. The, both of my parents were doing bartering all the way along the way, which kept us alive, and he never returned. Mm. We never knew why he didn't return mm -hmm. or what mm -hmm. specifically happened. And uh, there was the three of us, my mother with her two uh, children, uh, actually three children. Mm -hmm. One, on, she was breastfeeding, and mm -hmm. the other two were holding onto her skirts, and we tried to survive. The thing that made it so terrible is when he left, he took all the money, and he took all the passports and, the, uh, and ration cards. And without ration cards, there's nothing. There's no chance of survival. And that's what the, where the words come in, bread or death. Because oh. you'd wished for more food than a piece of crusty mud-like bread. Wow. Right. 
Right. Oh my gosh. Well, it, what it, an incredible it, story. Really. Yeah. And you we, are a miracle truly. sitting here. Totally. Yes, you absolutely are. And we're but so honored that you shared your story with us, Mel. What, because uh, did you want to say something else? Go ahead, Mel. Well, I can, can go on for hours. No, I know I, you. I'm I sorry know. that we can't have you. Well, we you would have you on for an entire show if yeah, we could, Yeah, we Mel. really would if we could. It truly, it's such an inspiration. You know, in stories like this, I think what's incredible, and, and I'm thrilled, and I know Karen and mm-hmm. I both have kids that are in the West Side School District. Well, you are, your mm-hmm. kids are grown, mine are, mm-hmm. my daughter is just starting high school, uh, and my son graduated from West Side, but they're, it, right now they're in the middle of uh, watching the movie The Pianist. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, it's incredible that they continue to um, talk about Nazi Germany and talk about right. the Holocaust and make sure that yeah. you never forget. Do you go and speak, Milt, to? Uh, from time to time, That's I do good. go and speak. Mm-hmm. But it's very, very important that young people understand what happened to the whole Absolutely. Thing. Absolutely. Because when you look, listen to the stories, what's happening in Europe now, I know. the Jews are running again. Anti-Semitism is a blaze like it never Absolutely. went to wait. Absolutely. And uh, unless people learn to recognize evil. Right. It will no matter never where go. you are. Yes. Right. I mean, evil is everywhere. Everywhere. Right. Milt, uh, are you recorded? Did somebody record your story? Like Shoah, you know how they would, re- no, you're not. No. You uh, this, this, uh, the well, first this is uh, it. Your yeah, book the, is the it. The first book was written in t- 2010, and this mm-hmm. has been the rewrite of that first mm-hmm. book. And how can we get your book? Go on Amazon.com. Yeah, on Amazon.com. Where is it else? It, uh, um, bookworm. Bookworm mm-hmm. at the airport. Right, at the airport. Right. Or the office at uh, Senior Market Sales. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Senior Market Sales. Because he's still That's working right. full That's time. Right. You're amazing. Because the world is yeah. insurance. Yeah. Uh, That's right. right. That's right. And yeah. what would the world be without, without Milton? Milton? That's for sure. Milton Mendel, Mendel, Mendel Kleinberg. Kleinberg and his beautiful wife, Marsha. Thank you so much Thanks, for Milton. being here. We would love to hear more, and we can have you back, okay? We'd love to. Okay. All Thank right. you. Thank I'm you, available. Milton.